of the past This is the year of the Lord Here at the foot of the cross We are outsiders no more Grace and peace to you, Hope College, and ah, happy end of week nine. We are so grateful to be here. We want to say thank you again. You guys are doing a fantastic job. Um, welcome to worship today. As the sun rose this morning over the buildings on Hope's campus, I was struck again by God's mercy, his grace, his beauty, and we're just thankful, thankful to be here. And so my name is Jill Nelson. I'm one of the chaplains here. Uh, we're glad to be in this space. We're glad you're joining us virtually from wherever you join us. And today we continue our series of our faculty staff witness. And we're glad to have Amy Otis here today. She is the senior director for the Freed Center of Global Engagement. And she's here to share part of her story. And we, um, we're grateful that she's here. As you join us, would you um, join us in worship? Worshiping the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit.
this opportunity just to come in your presence, God, um, and just experience who you are, God. I just pray that we create space wherever we are just to let you move in our, in our lives and just revive us with the word that you're going to bring today. So, God, um, I just thank you for your presence and I thank you for this time that we can be filled by you. Amen. This morning, I want to take you on a journey to a historic little village on the eastern border of Bosnia-Herzegovina. The year is 2002, and my group of volunteers and I have, been, uh, have spent the last 10 days delivering food packages to the people in the, tucked away in the mountains of Bosnia. On this particular day, we take a detour to Visegrad, a beautiful, picturesque village that has rolling hills on either side of the beautiful blue Drina River. A bridge dating back to the Ottoman Empire connects the two sides of town, and we are standing in the middle of this historic stone bridge looking down at the water. We are not alone. Our small group of volunteers is accompanied by our translators, young Muslim men who are visibly uncomfortable with the stop in Visegrad. As we stand here on the bridge, our group leader and some of these young men start sharing stories of the ethnic genocide that took place in the Balkans in the mid-1990s. Some of the translators, who are in their early 20s, limp and have scars across their faces, targets of snipers, booby traps, and landmines. They share stories of starvation, death, fear, and survival. Stories of being 12 and 13 years old, hiding in the mountains, searching for food to bring back to their families. Stories of how over 3,000 Muslims, Bosnian Muslims, were trucked in, marched to this particular spot on the bridge where we are standing, killed and dumped into the waters of the Drina River, all in the name of God. In fact, they say that the Drina River was not blue during those days. The water was red from the bloodshed. As I stand here processing these stories, one of the translators walks up to me and asks me a simple yet profound question. Are you happy that you came here? How do I answer this question? How do I describe the deep pain of shame that sits in the pit of my stomach? How can I look this young man in the eye and tell him how profoundly sorry I am for my ignorance, apathy, and self-absorption. While he and his family were hiding in basements, starving, and trying to survive an ethnic war. You see, I vividly remember those years, 1992 to 1995, when the massacres and killings were happening in Bosnia. I remembered the Euchre tournaments in the basement of Wyckoff Hall, the endless paper assignments and readings, the ultimate Frisbee games, and going to my classes. I vividly remember turning on the TV in Dykstra Hall and flipping past the news channels that showed fleeting images and sound bites that attested to the conflict in the Balkans in order to watch something more exciting. It never crossed my mind to pause, to ask questions, to see the faces of individuals affected, or to think about the people with dreams and hopes struggling to survive the bloody war on both sides. I did not see their humanity. I did not recognize my neighbor. Seven years, only seven, after these atrocities happened, I found myself on that bridge talking to my new friends, deeply ashamed of my myopic worldview as a student at Hope College. I was so consumed with my comfortable and safe, busy and fun everyday happenings of college life that I did not consider the human suffering and pain experienced by another. Where is your heart? Who is your neighbor? Many of us know the story of the Good Samaritan in the Gospel of Luke, chapter 10, and how Jesus uses the parable to challenge us to step beyond our differences to remind us of who our neighbor is. The law teaches, you shall love the Lord your God with all of your heart and with all of your soul and with all of your strength and with all of your mind and your neighbor 
as yourself. Jesus, who is my neighbor? A priest and a Levite pass a man lying on the side of the road who is a victim of a robbery, and they do not stop to help him. They do not see a fellow human broken and beaten in need of help. A third man, a Samaritan, however, stops the, to help the man without asking about his religious identity or worldview, his political leanings, sexual orientation, or family background. Perhaps he noticed some physical differences, but it did not stop him from helping the bruised and battered man. Jesus says that the Samaritan had compassion on the man, binding up his wounds, using precious oil and wine on the man before putting him on his own horse and taking him to an inn where he paid the innkeeper to take care of the man. At the end of the parable, Jesus charges us to show mercy to our neighbors. Let me ask ourselves this question. How do we show mercy when we do not recognize our neighbors? When we choose to flip and skim through the channels, perhaps not pausing to see another black person beaten and killed, an immigrant child separated from their parents, a migrant worker sprayed in pesticides as they pick our lettuce and tomatoes. Is our neighbor the detained woman who is a victim of forced sterilization, the teen who just came out, a refugee family crammed into a small tent, or drowning in the seas trying to escape violence and persecution? Or is it the lonely elderly lady next door? Perhaps it's the folks wearing MAGA hats we don't want to look at, the armed men and women in front of the Capitol building, conservatives, liberals, progressives. Are these people too far from your reality? Too far? Too different? Too whatever? To be considered neighbors? Where is your heart? Who is your neighbor? When today we are so divided, distant, polarized, across so many differences. Let me return to that moment on the bridge in Visegrad, Bosnia. As I stood on that bridge in that moment, a profound change took place in my heart and my mind. I realized that God was calling me into a space of seeing the world in a new way, of moving me out of my myopic complacency where I was the center of my own comfortable universe. He was challenging me to see the humanity in the other, in the person who looks different, believes differently, lives differently, shares a different story and narrative, someone who is not part of my immediate reality. He was instilling in me a deep sense of compassion, love, and justice for those who are hurting, marginalized, hungry, beaten, regardless of who they are. God challenged me to love him with all aspects of my being, including recognizing and loving my neighbor. When I love my neighbor, I am loving and worshiping God. But let me be clear here. Loving God, loving my neighbor, is justice work. God is deeply passionate about justice. When I say I love God, it must be with a deep commitment to justice. In Amos 5, 21 to 24, we read, I hate, I despise your festivals, and I take no delight in your solemn assemblies. Even though you offer me burnt offerings and grain offerings, I will not accept them. And the offerings of well-being of your fatted animals, I will not look upon. Take away from me the noise of your songs. I will not listen to the melody of your harps. But let justice roll down like waters and righteousness like an ever-flowing stream. Gary Hagen, founder of International Justice Missions, writes in Just Courage, for those neighbors around the world, and I would insert here in the United States as well, who are suffering injustice, we can't say that we love them if we do not draw near and seek justice on their behalf. We must seek to rescue our neighbors with the dedication and urgency with which we would go about rescuing our own family or even ourselves. In a world of injustice, 
Loving intervention on behalf of the oppressed is simple obedience to Jesus' most fundamental command to love our neighbor. Simple obedience. Yes, my time in Bosnia happened a number of years ago, but do you know that this experience has had a profound impact of, on me almost every single day of my life? Every day, I have to ask myself these questions. Who is my neighbor today? What stories do I need to listen to today? Who do I need to meet today? Where is my heart? Am I loving my neighbor? Is justice at work? And if not, where is my voice? If someone seems too distant, too different from me, and I find myself crossing to the other side of the road, the way the priest and the Levite did, then I am not loving God. Asking these questions in my life drives much of my passion for teaching and engaging Hope students, sending you on off-campus study programs here in the U.S. and across the globe. I deeply desire for you to encounter God's world and people with his eyes and love to expand your understanding of who your neighbor is and the justice work God calls us to. In fact, I beg you, I beg you not to be the apathetic college student that I was. Open your eyes, pause, listen, find your voice, ask questions, develop empathy and compassion for the other, especially the other who seems so far removed from your current reality and comfort zone. Are you truly loving the Lord your God with all of your heart and with all of your soul and with all of your strength and all of your mind and your neighbor as yourself? Is your worship tied to justice? Where is your heart? Who is your neighbor? Are you loving your neighbor? What precious oil and wine will you use from your life as you encounter your neighbor? And then wait and see what God does. Go forth in peace, grace, and love into this day that the Lord has made. Be blessed and be a blessing. Amen. down like rain, love, that I can't explain, peace that still my soul, light in the darkest place.